This might seem like a weird topic, but today we're going to talk about love. Now, what I mean by that is you're going to struggle with feelings of love for your abuser. You didn't get where you got because everything was terrible. I know the drill. Most abusers can be very charming. They can say exactly the right things that you need to hear. They can treat you like you were a queen and make you feel like the most important thing in their lives. And it's exactly what we need to hear. And then that's where the chipping away process comes in. Oh, I don't want you to go to, to the store with Susan because y'all might get hurt. Man, that feels good to know that somebody cares about you like that, doesn't it? Little by little, they chip away. All in the name of love. So when you've made the decision to break free, it's quite natural that you're still going to feel love for your abuser. But don't be confused. Love is not controlled. And even if there was true love there, something went wrong. There's a book on the market called Boundaries, and there's a whole series of books called Boundaries. Boundaries in Marriage, Boundaries in Teens. There's a bunch of them. They're by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. These are excellent resources to teach us healthy boundaries in our relationships. They can be used in relationships or work environments or teenagers or friends or family and they're good to know. I encourage you to pick up one of these books and, and study on that. Boundaries are healthy. We're called to help each other carry their burdens. We're not called to carry their load. And you might find yourself saying to yourself, well, I don't want him to go to jail. I just want him to get counseling. Still, I encourage you to tell your story. Hold nothing back. Now is not the time. Now is the time for you to be truthful, honest, and upfront in what you're dealing with and what your children are, deal are dealing with. Let society fix those things. Let society figure out the details of what they're going to do with the information that you give them. It's time that you stand up in love. Imagine this. What if he needs you to do that in order to see him finally break free of his issues? He's got them. In any domestic violence situation, there's not just one broken person. There's two. Don't lose sight of that. And I know what you're thinking. The children need the love of their dad. And that's true. They desperately need the love and the guidance of someone who's healthy. Maybe you exposing what's going on will get him the help that he needs. Even if he does do jail time, maybe that's the jolt that it's going to take for him to finally break free. Don't withhold that from him. Don't withhold that from the children. What if he did get help? What if you did get help? What if the children got help? And by God's grace, you could pull it all back together. Now, in my situation, that was impossible. But anything's possible with God. And if it was truly meant to be, it will be. You're all going to come out stronger no matter what you endure. You're about to be faced with some real hardships. Financial hardships, mental hardships and trying to work through the issues that you've got to work through. Helping your children work through their issues and to help them grow stronger. To help them not perpetuate this cycle of abuse. It's going to be a journey for you for your children, and for your abuser. Don't discount what they can learn as you go on your journey and your children see the hardships that you endure, see the hardships that you go through, and see the hardships that you experience. They'll learn something. They'll learn it's not okay. That abuse is never okay. I encourage you 
to sit your children down and have short conversations. Don't make it too overwhelming. This is a big topic. Help them express the feelings that they've had. Help them to even express the feelings of love that they have for their abuser. Get them the help that they need. There's resources out there available. We covered that in a previous video that will give you uh, resources to go out there and get counseling for your children and for yourself. And, and you need it. They need to feel safe. They need to know that no matter how they feel that they can express that, that you will be there for them as they go through their journey. Every person involved looks at things differently and they have the right to do that. They don't have to feel the same way you do. That's okay. That's part of their journey. Tell your children it wasn't their fault. And that it's okay to be sad and to love their abuser and to be angry at the same time. Teach them how to handle that anger and those negative feelings constructively. Help them to renew their minds. They're as damaged as you are and they need your help. I distinctly remember I was working at a psych hospital as an aide in the admissions department. Now, consider this, every patient that came in was completely off their meds. So there were some really troubled people who came in. And part of my job was sitting with the patient when they were having their interview with the doctor. Now my role was to make sure that the, if things escalated, that the doctor was protected. And so my role was to take that person down. And I distinctly remember that this one particular patient that came in and I was sitting there quietly. I never really spoke unless the doctor asked me a direct question. And I was listening to their story and I was thinking, oh my word, I really am crazier than you are. And you're about to be admitted into a psych hospital. If you're anything like me, your abuser told you 150,000 times that you were crazy. I'm here to tell you today you're not. And once you get past the abuse and back on your feet, you're going to be just fine.